Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the plugins for Obsidian. Right now, we're on version 0 0.6.5. Um, one recent change that they did make is that the help files now, if you click on help, um, it doesn't put the folder and the files in your filing folders um, that you've created. It opens it up in its own window um, as if it's its own. Uh, vault. Okay, so the plugins. If we go into Obsidian Notes, we can see which plugins are all available. They do have a certain format to the way they document the plugins. So you'll see the plugin name, you'll see when it was introduced, which version of Obsidian, and whether it's enabled or disabled by default. You also get the description of what the plugin does below. So the first one we'll go ahead and walk through these one by one. The audio recorder plugin. Um, and this is plain to, to see and even read from the title. This one here when you enable it records your voice. We go into the settings, into plugins. This one is typically disabled by default. Um, I went in and enabled this one manually. What happens when you enable it? You get this icon here in the left nav bar. And when you click on it, it's turned green. And once the audio is enabled, you can start speaking. We are speaking into the audio recovery recorder of Obsidian. Then you can go ahead and tap it again to stop. And what will happen is when you go into your notes, the recording is placed by default in your in your folder directory, in the root of your folder directory. We click on the audio recording. We can click play. And once the audio is enabled, you can and you can see we can hear the audio here. And you can embed the audio or link to it in your in your notes. The next plugin is the custom CSS. So Obsidian is built on Electron, which allows um, a, a lot of flexibility in the customization of the UI. Obsidian opens this up by giving you the option to create your own custom obsidian.css file, which you'd put in your root vault directory. In here, you would put your different settings that you'd want for the different colors um, in the different areas here of your, your UI. All right, so the easiest way to get working with the custom CSS is to go ahead and enable the plugin. And what you'll see is the community themes will show up underneath the plugins here, which allows you to do a con uh, configure it. And there are some pre-built things that are already um, available from the community. And the easiest way for you to go ahead and get started is really to select one of these here and click use. And what will happen is that will create that CSS, that obsidian.css file that it's looking for in the root of the vault. And it'll also change the thing. You can see here in the background how everything has changed. So if we go and update, the, open up this file, you see all the different settings here that are in the file for the theme. Go in and change it as you like and see how the UI changes for you. Um, I'll leave those details up to you to dig into, but it's pretty easy and straightforward. And if you want to go back to the default uh, theme, you can just as easily delete this file and you can see how it immediately uh, removed the thing 
you'll also want to go ahead and and um, disable the plugin as well if you're not going to use it. The next plugin is the Daily Notes plugin. Now, this plugin basically just gives you a shortcut to opening up a, a new note, a new file and that is pre named with um, a particular formatting that you that you dictate. Enable daily notes. So this is the plugin configuration area. Plugins that require or or can be configured will show up underneath this area. The daily notes configurations allow you to change the format of the name, the location of the file, and also it allows you to create a template and leverage a template. So when you create a new daily note, it'll be pre-populated with certain information. Let's see how that looks. So if we go to the root directory, let's create a new file. And let's name it note temp, temp and in this we'll type in a few things here uh, what am I grateful for today did I meditate did I work out. Um, we'll, we'll leave it at this here. So we will go ahead and close this one here. Let's note the name. Um, note TMPL. We'll go back into the settings area and we'll type this in here. L .md. And let's see if this allows us to once we click on the daily note icon here, we see that it's pre-populated. So it, puts, it gives it the name that's specified in that configuration. By default, it's the four-digit year, the two-digit month, and a two-digit date. And then we created the template and configured it to use this template. So every time or every day we click on this link, it will uh, pre-populate the, the daily note file with this information from the template. The next plugin is the graph view plugin and as you can see this one is enabled by default and what this does is give you a graphical representation of your your notes and the links between other notes. This one is enabled by default so if we look here on the left hand pane, we can see the open graph view icon. And if we click on it, we get this nice map of all the notes and the connections between the notes here in the window. If you hover over one of the notes, you can see all of the links to other notes and so forth. You can click on the note to open it by default as well. The next plugin, the command palette. This here basically gives you a shortcut to the to the actual hotkeys that are available. So if we click the short keys as stated here on a Mac, which is Control Command plus P, on Windows it's Control Function P. Then you get access to the uh, the hotkeys that are in the that, that are available for the application. Now, if you want to change, make changes to these hotkeys, go into settings, go into hotkeys, and then we can make changes to the hotkeys and which keys we want to be available for those here. The next plugin we're going to go over is the quick switcher. This gives you keyboard shortcuts to opening up notes without having to click over in the in your file explorer. So if you're in a note like I'm in right now, 
from the keyboard, I can just go ahead and hit the short key, and it opens up this this uh, this quick switcher switcher, and you can type in the name or select the note um, from the quick switcher here, and then hit Escape to remove the quick switcher from view. The next plugin is Random Note. It's a pretty straightforward plugin. People find it useful to update themselves on different notes they may have created in the past, may have forgotten about. So the, the random note picker is disabled by default. So you will have to go into the plugins, down to the random notes, and enable this. Once you enable it, you get the little dice icon on the side to open a random note. And when you click on it, you can see it just opens up a random note. So the next plugin is the tag pane. When this is enabled, you get a shortcut within the right nav bar to all the tags that are available within your notes. This one is disabled by default, so we need to go into the plugins and enable it. And we can see here, this is the tag pane. When you click on it, your tags show up here and the number of times those tags are used. Go ahead and add another tag just to show that it updates dynamically as you add tags into your notes. And if you click on the, the, the tag, it will basically put that tag in the search and then you can see all the uh, files that have the tag in it. The last plugin we're going to go over is the Zettelkasten Prefixer. Uh, basically it's used to create a timestamp ID for the notes that you create. This plugin is disabled by default so we must go into the plugins settings and enable. Now once this is enabled we also see here that in the plugin section you can select this and when you're creating notes that leverage this particular plugin you can have those notes go to a specific file directory. To create the new Zettelcast note we click on this you'll see it creates the note with the formatted structure that was um, noted in the plugin details and each time you create a new note you'll get a unique ID for each note. Okay so those are all the notable plugins that I wanted to go over today. I hope this video was helpful. If it was please like and subscribe to the channel and have a productive day with positive outcomes.